As you guys know, during the course of the regular season, I try not to get too high or too low on any one team because as we all know, it's a very long season. With the season being so long, change is only natural. Sometimes things can change for the better, and then other times things can change for the worse, which unfortunately has been the case for the Milwaukee Bucks, who fired their head coach after starting the season 30-13. and 13. The Milwaukee Bucks had the second best record in the East at the time of Adrian Griffin's firing. And while they still have the second best record, things haven't been going nearly as well for Milwaukee. Since the firing of Adrian Griffin, the Milwaukee Bucks have gone a pedestrian 17 and 17. And to make matters worse, that record doesn't tell the full story of how bad the things have gotten in Milwaukee. This Bucks team has Damian Lillard, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Chris Middleton, and Brooke Lopez. This team should be winning as they dominate teams inside while demoralizing them as they hit threes from the other side of the court that just don't make any sense. This team isn't supposed to be going 500 and looking shaky right before the postseason starts. Unironically, Damian Lillard had a great quote about change. To quote Dame, you look at Russell Westbrook, you leave OKC for Houston, then James Harden decided he's leaving. Now Russ is traded to DC and then you get traded from DC to the Lakers. Now you're on your fourth team in four years and in your second year on the team, everybody is talking about how they should trade you. Now you're coming off of the bench. This dude is a Hall of Famer, an MVP. It's an example that the grass isn't always greener. So far, the grass hasn't been looking greener for Damian Lillard and this Milwaukee Bucks squad, despite me trying to give Doc his flowers just a handful of videos ago. Guys, we have to talk about what in the world has been going on in Milwaukee, but before we go any further, we have to get a word from today's sponsor. Going to events with family and friends has produced some irreplaceable memories for me. I really can't overstate how much I love to attend live events. Now, while I do love going to events, the ticket buying process can be a real pain. This is where game time comes in. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all of the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. Guys, game time is amazing. They have great last minute deals which are offered even an hour after an event starts. They have all in prices and they have their lowest price guarantee, which is clutch if you're like me and you're just out there trying to find the best deal possible. In fact, Game Time wants you to get the best deal so bad that if you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Guys, take the guesswork out of buying tickets and use Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account and use code COOP for $20 off of your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code COOP for $20 off. Huge shout out to Game Time for coming through and sponsoring today's content. The Milwaukee Bucks being 17 and 17 since the firing of Adrian Griffin is an unmitigated disaster. And as I said earlier in this video, Unfortunately, their record since the firing doesn't come close to telling the full story of how woeful that this team has been. While the Bucks have been 1-5 in, in their last 6 and that's bad enough, to get an idea of how bad that things have gotten for this team, you have to look at who their last 3 L's have come against. Tuesday, April 2nd, the Bucks would fall 117-113 to to the Washington Wizards who are not only the second worst team in the Eastern Conference, but they are also the second worst team in the entire NBA. The Wizards 15 wins this season only trails the Detroit Pistons who only have 13. And we all know exactly how bad Detroit has been this season. The Detroit Pistons are the same team that lost 28 straight games this season. That is not hyperbole. The Wizards being that close to this squad and wins should tell you everything that you really need to know about this situation. Against the Bucks, the Wizards would start a lineup that consisted of Anthony Gill, Marvin Bagley III, Corey Kispert, Denny Avdia, and Jordan Poole. For crying out loud, Kyle Kuzma and Tyus Jones didn't even play. Now, to be fair to the Bucks, they didn't have Damian Lillard, but this is the Wizards that we are talking about here. You should not need Damian Lillard for this game. For me, what hurt the most about this L is that Giannis went off like he's been doing all season. He had a 35 point, 15 rebound, and 10 assist triple double. He went 15 of 21 from the field, but still this would not be enough to beat the Wizards. Nobody in Washington had a chance of stopping Giannis, and what does this team do? It chucks up 48 threes and only hits 11 of them. In part, Giannis would blame this loss on the team's transition defense, saying that we didn't do a good enough job to get back, even at the end. 
And Giannis is right, as this play right here summed up the entire game for the Milwaukee Bucks. The Bucks would cut the lead to two with 11 seconds left, but somehow Anthony Gill gets wide open behind the defense, but he blows the layup. And of course, nobody else on the Bucks team gets back. Gill puts it back in and basically that's the game. The Bucks got an absolute gift there at the end, but they just didn't want it bad enough. While Giannis would blame this sell partially on transition defense, Doc Rivers would in part blame the travel staff. To quote Doc, you know, it's funny, I've actually been sitting back and watching everything, not just our players, but our travel crew also everything and i've made a lot of notes i will say that i won't share that but we don't bring the necessary professionalism or seriousness on the road and that's something that we can fix and that's something that we're going to have to fix and just when you think that this response is pure satire it gets even better when doc would readdress his concerns with the team staff after a follow-up question would be asked to continue quoting him i'm looking at the long run too it's not just for now We've got to be a better road team. If we're not, we're doing something wrong. As a coaching staff, we have to figure out what we need to do different as far as practices and training. As a travel staff, not talking players, we have to do something different there too, because something's missing and everybody seems happy, you know, except for me after a game. So I just think that we're doing something wrong and we need to figure that out. Imagine that you're an equipment manager and you're doing an unbelievable job at your job. And the next thing you know, you find out that your job is in jeopardy because Doc threw you under the bus. I mean, it's already bad enough that you got called out by Giannis earlier this year. So this Doc stuff could really be the icing on the cake for you because at this point, it's like, what are you doing? In all seriousness, those comments about the equipment manager are pure jokes and nothing that would really move me. Now, what would move me is what Doc said about this team's overall level of professionalism. For the Bucks, there's a chance that their hunger just isn't there anymore. So how would the Bucks follow up their traumatizing L against the Wizards with the Grizzlies up next on the schedule? Well, they would follow it up with another L. The Bucks would lose to the Grizzlies 111 to 101. This game, the Grizzlies started a lineup consisting of Scottie Pippen Jr., Luke Kennard, Trey Jemison. Gigi Jackson, and Jaron Jackson Jr. The Grizzlies, while being better than the Wizards, are currently 27 and 50 and destroyed by injury. Their record effectively makes them one of the worst teams in the Western Conference. If things weren't already bad enough in Milwaukee, Giannis has been battling a hamstring issue which clearly bothered him against the Grizzlies. In fact, against the Grizzlies, there was a moment where Giannis would grab his leg in pain, but Giannis would keep playing. To which Doc would say after the game that he wishes that he had taken him out because it looked like he was running on fumes. It's really noble of Giannis to play through injury in an effort to get his team out of a funk just before the postseason begins. But at the same time, this team absolutely needs you to be 100% if you are Giannis. That is, if the Bucks want to have a chance to win anything. Unironically, this team will also need Damian Lillard to be 100%. I know that Damian Lillard has caught some flack after watching his numbers drop from 32.2 points per game to 24.4 this year, but his impact has been huge for this Bucks team that hasn't been able to win without him. With no Dame, the Bucks have gone an ugly 1-7. Now while Dame has seen his numbers drop this season, he's still been the same Dame, he's just in a new role. When Giannis doesn't play, Dame is averaging 32.3 points. 8.3 assists and 4 rebounds. I know that these numbers only come from a 6 game sample size in Milwaukee, but we have an entire career from Dame that backs up my point that Dame is that guy. So with no Giannis, Dame would return to the Bucks lineup against the Raptors, who were currently 24 and 53. Surely this game would just have to be the game where the Milwaukee Bucks got everything back on track, right? Not a chance. Despite Dame dropping 36 points, 6 assists, and 5 rebounds, the Bucks would lose to the Toronto Raptors 117 to 111. This game, the Toronto Raptors would start Kelly Olynyk, 
Gary Trent Jr., RJ Barrett, Emmanuel Quickly, and O'Shea Abaji. So they were playing legitimate NBA talent, but still, I can't just go out there and give the Bucks a pass for this one. Trends are trends, and you should never overreact to them, but at this point in time, what it feels like that I'm starting to notice is a habit. Maybe this just is who this Bucks team is under Doc Rivers. Bucks fans, in the comments below, let me know how you guys feel about the way that this season is gone. Do you think that this team shouldn't have fired Coach Bud? Do you think that firing Adrian Griffin was the right decision after seeing how mediocre that Doc Rivers could be? Which, who would you have tried to hire as your head coach midseason if it wasn't Doc Rivers? Hey, I'll still give it to Doc. He has improved this team's defense with the Bucks having the 11th best defense in the league since Griffin's firing. Which, if you ask me, is much better than the 20th ranked defense that they had, but to that I would also ask, was it worth it? Again, let me know what you guys think of everything down in the comments below. Clicking the video on the screen right now is a great way to support my channel. I'm Get Like Coop, bringing you guys the scoop until our next upload.